Hello there and welcome to this lesson which is titled Adding Animations and Transitions to Microsoft PowerPoint. Animations and transitions can be added to any slide and provide flair and interest when delivering your presentations. Whilst there are many amazing animation effects and transitions, too many of either of these can distract the audience when you're delivering your presentation. However, if you use them sparingly, they can be added to presentations and they provide some real interest and engagement when you're presenting. Animations can be added to any element within a slide. There are a range of predefined animations including bouncing, following a set path, flying in, flying out, as well as various exit and entrance animations. Transitions are shown when the presenter changes slides. Transitions are simple animations which appear on the screen and transition the current slide into the next slide. Again, there are various predefined transitions within Microsoft PowerPoint and there are simple ones such as cut, split and reveal, as well as more complex ones such as aeroplane and origami. OK, let's begin the lesson. We're going to start the lesson by looking at animations. Any object on a PowerPoint slide can be animated and in this lesson I'm going to use a piece of word art to illustrate the various animations. Once you have selected the object on the slide you wish to animate, navigate to the Animations tab and click on Animations. You'll see a menu with lots of different animations displayed and all you need to do is either click on the down arrow here to view all of them and then select a specific animation and it will preview that on the page and if you click on the different animations at the top here again it will preview them on the slide as you can see there are lots of different entrance emphasis and exit animations but you can also use some more advanced features such as motion paths and this means that you can draw the path that the animation takes. So for example, it's taking a line at the moment, you can make it take a curve, you can even loop it if you want to, that's horrible. Um, and you can also create a custom path. It's really powerful animations. Okay, so let's set the animation to just a simple fly in. Excellent. And basically the controls and timings for animations can be configured in this top right hand corner screen. So you can decide whether the animation starts on click or when the presenter goes to the next slide or the previous slide. You can set the duration of the animation and you can also set a delay here if you wish so you could wait for five seconds before the animation actually plays. You will also notice that a number appears next to any animated item on the slide and these will increase as the number of the animations increase. You can also click on the preview button and this will show you the animations that are currently set up on any slide. OK, next we're going to move on to transitions, which are used to transition between slides. As with animations, transitions should be used sparingly, and it's better to only use one or two transitions on all of your slides, rather than a unique one for every slide. Slide transitions are accessed via the Transition menu tab, located at the top of the window. So here they are. There are various transitions that can be added to a slide, and I advise learners to test them out by clicking on a example of a transition. So for example, if we click on fade, you can see the fade transition. If you click on the preview button, you can see it again. And as with animations, if you click on this button here, there are plenty more animations that you can use. So for example, aeroplane or origami. 
You can change the effect of the transition by clicking on Effect Options. This will allow you to change the direction that the transition occurs in, whether that be vertical in or out or horizontal in or out, depending on the type of transition. Sound can also be added to a transition by selecting the appropriate sound. You can change the duration of a transition and you can also apply these settings to all transitions throughout your presentation by clicking on apply to all. The advanced slide section allows you to decide whether you want to advance the slides on mouse click or after a set number of seconds. Now be careful with this setting because nine times out of ten if there's a problem with your presentation then it's usually something to do with this advanced slide and you've got to be careful because it applies to each slide. So you could have the first slide to transition on mouse click, you could set the second slide up to transition after five seconds so you don't need to click, keep clicking the mouse but that can get problematic because if you set that too often then it might be too quick and you have to go back to each individual slide and select these options here. That's it for this lesson. Why not join me in the next lesson where I will show you how to add audio, video, animations and transitions to an existing rather boring presentation to make it fun, engaging and interactive to your audience.